in this video, uh, we're picking up uh, after our configuration of Git and GitHub in the last video uh, by actually uh, using Git and GitHub to store some files and uh, to track changes to those files. Uh, so let's start off by going back to GitHub and creating our first repository. I'm just going to open up the browser here uh, and go to github.com. And uh, a repository uh, is the sort of storage location where Git uh, keeps track of the files that we're asking it to store. Um, so it keeps the files themselves. Uh, it also keeps the um, earlier versions of those files. Um, if we create some files and then make changes to them, uh, it will keep uh, track of those changes. Uh, and it also keeps track of a little bit of extra information about the history so that each time the change, that a change is made, it will keep track of uh, who made the change um, and it can show us the difference between that uh, version after that change and uh, relative to the, to the version from before. Um, so we're going to create a repository so we can do all these things. So down here on the lower right, your repositories, new repository. Um, now, this repository that I'm about to create uh, will be publicly uh, visible, be effectively open source. So anyone can see it, anyone can download the code. Um, it is possible with GitHub to have private repositories that only you and, and the people you choose can see. Uh, however, you, you need to pay for that feature, uh, whereas the public repositories uh, are free to create. Uh, so you can pick any project name you want here. And if you want, you could also fill in these description and URL fields. I'm going to leave those blank. Uh, when you're ready, just click Create Repository. And there we are. We have our first Git repository. This is my username here, and then the name of the repository. Um, this page that you're taken to shows some tips on uh, next things you can do with the repository. Uh, this is a good reference. Um, However, I'm going to kind of ignore it now because we'll go through these steps uh, in our own way in this video. Um, so now we have this repository here. Um, in GitHub, we're going to go back to Git, Git bash. Um, so first of all, there's one extra piece of configuration that I forgot about last time around that we need to get out of the way. Um, so there's going to be another git config command, dash dash global. And we want to set core.editor to notepad. Um, and if you want, you can do a quick list to just verify the, the settings that you have. Um, so now that we've done that, um, let me tell you a little bit about the overall setup that we're going to have. So we created a repository in GitHub. Uh, we're going to have that repository, which is sort of um, stored uh, in the cloud, as they say, uh, uh, on the internet, uh, maintained by GitHub. We're going to also have a separate uh, local repository that we keep uh, on our local computer, on our own computer. Uh, and then we can create the changes on our computer, put them into our local repository, and then we can push those changes from the local repository to GitHub. Um, and in a situation where we're collaborating with other people or working with uh, other people on our team, um, we can also pull the changes that they have put into GitHub down into our local repository in this computer, uh, which we'll hopefully get to in a later video. Um, so we created already the remote repository in GitHub, and now we're going to create our local repository. Um, and to do that, we first need to make a directory uh, where we want to store this repository. So I'm going to see which directory we're in, just for reference, this pwd command. Okay, so I'm in the C users Scott Cedarberg directory. Um, I'm going to use the make dir command, mkdir space. Uh, and I'm going to give this directory the same name as the project that I just created in GitHub, the repository, excuse me, that I just created in GitHub. And then we're going to change into that directory, which is this command cd, and then the name of the directory. And if we do a pwd again, you'll see I'm now in this video subdirectory. Now, we need to create this repository, which will be inside this video directory. We just type git space init. Hit 
enter, and you will just see initialized empty git repository. So now we have the remote, we have the local, and we're going to go ahead and create a change here in this directory. So let's just do an ls, which will show us the files we have in this directory. Right now we don't have anything. Let's just create an empty file that's called readme. For that, we'll use this command called touch. And if we do an ls, we see, oh, now we have a file. Now let's edit that file using notepad. Do notepad space and then readme. Enter. Should open up notepad. We have an empty file here. Now here, let's just put, you can put whatever you want, but let's just put some text describing this project. So we're going to say um, this um, project. we've done that, we can save the file, and we can exit. Again, we can see readme. We can also, if we want to see what's inside there, we can use a command called cat, which just spits it out. There it is. Now, um, we're going to ask git. Uh, git sort of automatically detects when we change things here in this video directory, so we're going to use a command to ask git just sort of what it thinks is going on. For that, we'll use git status. And it prints out a short message here. It is sort of ignore this thing about branches. It's just sort of an advanced topic. Uh, but if you look farther down, you see that there's some untracked files, uh, namely this readme file we just created. What that means is that uh, Git's found that this file is somewhere here in this video directory, but it, we haven't asked Git to keep track of it for us. And to do that, we use this command git add, which they're showing us right up here. So let's do that now git add readme. Now, if we do git status again, we will see this is looking a little different. It says now changes to be committed, new file. Now, every time we change something and ask git to keep track of that change, it's referred to as a commit. We say that we're committing the change to git. And to do that, we use a command git space commit. And it will commit, when we do that, all of these files that are listed here under change, changes to be committed. So first, it will open up Notepad and give us an opportunity to write a message describing what this commit is. So let's just type something here. Initial commit of readme file. Now let's say initial version of readme file. Um, and we'll save that. Exit. It's a good idea to take the time to um, put something here that's a helpful description so that when you're looking back at what changed, you can sort of remember what happened. Now I do exit, and you'll see an inf some information telling you that uh, this readme file has been committed. So congratulations, that's your first git commit. Um, now if we run git status, we notice that uh, nothing to be committed remains. And if we run git log, we can see a history of the commits that we've made. Um, we'll talk a little more next time about what all is here, but you can see that it's showing this description um, and also the date of the change and uh, who made the change. So in our next video, we'll talk a little bit more about this history, and we'll also talk about how we can take these local changes and push them into GitHub.